Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. So today we're going to continue with our country case study series looking at Azerbaijan. And in our country case study series, we always look at the history of migration, uh, migration policy, migration governance, and also the current migration situation in the country today. And right now I'm going to continue with looking at the migration policy in Azerbaijan. Of course, if you're interested in those other videos, please do check them out here and I'll make sure to link them in the description below. Now let's jump in and get started because there's a lot to cover with regard to the migration policy in Azerbaijan. So an important governing framework within Azerbaijan is the National Migration Strategy. Um, this was actually drafted in 2020, so very recently with the partnership of the relevant state authorities um, and led by the State Migration Service. This document entails relevant measures and indicators towards effective protection of the rights and interests of foreigners and stateless persons in the Republic of Azerbaijan, as well as citizens of the Republic of Azerbaijan living abroad and the fulfillment of obligations, for instance, on refugees, on asylum seekers, on stateless persons and others in accordance with international documents, which Azerbaijan is party to. And it helps to also, of course, improve the mechanisms for regulation of internal migration. So let's look also now at some of the important legislation within the country. Um, so the migration legislation in Azerbaijan consists of the Constitution of the Republic of Azerbaijan, the Migration Code of the Republic of Azerbaijan, um, other migration related codes and laws and international agreements that the Republic is party to. So if we look at the, if we first look at the Constitution of the Republic of Azerbaijan, there are, so, there are six articles that are really related to migration issues, Article 52 on citizenship rights, others on the provision of citizenship rights, the right to participate in state management, the right of foreigners and stateless persons, the right of political asylum, and competence of the President of the Republic. The Migration Code, though, was adopted on July 2nd of 2013 and entered into force on August 1st of that same year. Now, there have also been a number of amendments to the Migration Code over time. For instance, the registration of foreigners and stateless persons upon place of stay um, need to be done within 15 days. There is no application for registration via um, post. There are several other important points that are there. For instance, the provision um, stipulating the restriction of foreign entry for five years if the person has violated migration uh, legislation twice or more um, in the last three years, and this was actually repealed. There are a number of other uh, important amendments that we've seen to the code that you can also see here. Other important codes that include some provisions regarding foreigners are the labor code, the administrative offenses code, the election code, the land code, the criminal code, the code of criminal procedures of the Republic of Azerbaijan. I'm not gonna go into all of these here, but of course, course, like in all of my videos, all of the references will be listed in the description below. So if you're interested more in these, you can check them out there. Now let's look at some of the main laws in the field of migration. So one is the law on citizenship of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Another one is on the rules on processing and addressing citizenship um, issues of the Republic of Azerbaijan. There's also another on the rule of establishment of citizenship of persons. Another law um, on the status of refugees and IDPs, and a law on the procedure for processing the application for refugee status. There are several other migration related laws. I'm not going to go through all of them here, but you can see them here on the screen. Some of the other important key laws for migration in the country. So there are a number of also international conventions and documents that Azerbaijan is also party to. So once gaining independence, Azerbaijan is seated and signed a number of international conventions and treaties and took the obligation to align and improve the national legislation with the requirements of those internationally accepted documents. The country at the time acceded more than 20 international conventions in the field, uh, field of migration. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I'll list them here on the screen so you have an idea of all of these important different um, conventions that they have uh, um, become party to. So things from the International Convention on the Protection of Rights of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families, 
to uh, the European Convention on Extradition and, and much, much more. Azerbaijan also has a number of bilateral, bilateral agreements that they have signed with other countries with regard to migration. So they have agreements on cooperation in the field of migration with international organizations, with foreign states. They also have agreements on labor, social protection and employment spheres, agreements on visa facilitation, agreements on readmission of persons without authorization also. There are some important key terms when we're talking about migration policy in Azerbaijan. And these are based on the duration of stay of immigrants. And this is divided into three categories. So you have one, the person temporarily staying in the country. Two, a person temporarily residing in the country. And three, a person permanently residing in the country. There are also several different migration policy and rules. I'll just put them up on the screen here. I'm not going to go through each of them uh, um, in each of the details, but let's talk first about some of the important immigration rules. So we have registration upon place of stay, and this is not really with regard to uh, um, residence. This is really just if someone is coming in, you can think of this a bit more like a tourist visa. So according to the migration code, foreigners and stateless persons intending to stay for more than 15 days in the territory um, should register upon place of stay. The duration of the temporary stay um, in a visa-free regime is no more than 90 days. Um, of course, there are different visas that also can be applied for for longer than 90 days. There are a number of different documents that are required. You can see them here. You need an application form. You need a passport, of course. If you want to have an extension of temporary staying period, this is, you know, for the extension going forward and it needs to be applied within three business days prior to the ex expiration of whatever documentation that, that the person had before. A temporary stay period can be extended up to 60 days and grounds for extension of this temporary period are, for instance, for important medical treatments, for serious illness, and for a number of other things that you can also see here. Then we also have an, a temporary residence permit. So foreigners should apply for a temporary residence at least 30 days before whatever other documents they have expire for staying in Azerbaijan. Duration of the permit is also up to one year and can be extended each time for up to two years. Of course, there's also a separate uh, policy that applies to foreign investors. Foreign investors need to uh, invest uh, 250,000 euro and then the duration is up to three years and can be extended each time for up to another three years. There are a number of ways in which you can obtain a residence permit in Azerbaijan. There are a number of uh, um, ways in which this can be done. I'll list some of them here on the screen, but I'm not going to go through each of these. One important way for migration in Azerbaijan is family reunification. For, so foreigners and stateless persons can apply for temporary or permanent residence if they are um, close relatives of a citizen of Azerbaijan, if they're a family member of a foreigner or stateless person temporarily or permanently residing in Azerbaijan, and foreigners or stateless persons who are married with a citizen of Azerbaijan can obtain residence permits even if they are a carrier of a virus that's included in the list of dangerous and, and infectious diseases, which is something that would maybe not allow someone to come into Azerbaijan otherwise. If a person is also granted refugee status, his or her family members are also granted the same status. So if we look at permanent residency now, after two years of uninterrupted temporary residence, foreigners can apply for permanent residence. Uninterrupted means that they should stay in Azerbaijan for at least 90 days within the last 180 days. They should apply uh, three months prior to the expiration of their temporary residence permit. And while processing the application, their knowledge on rights and duties and the official uh, language and skills are tested. There are exceptions um, for children and elderly, and the duration of the residence permit is five years and can be extended each time uh, for five years. Now let's turn and look at labor migration, which is a very important component of, of migration in Azerbaijan as it is a labor um, immigration country. So it's receiving uh, labor migrants from many other countries. It's an attractive country for labor migrants due to the developments in energy, oil, and the construction centers. Companies are interested in recruiting also highly skilled migrant workers to meet both, but both highly skilled and lower skilled workers to meet labor demands. To do this, they need to apply for a temporary residence permit on the basis of a work permit. 
and the state migration service is key and responsible for issuing work permits but also considers feedback the, the ministry of labor and other ministries there's also a labor migration quota that is set in azerbaijan in 2019 the labor migration quota was set at just under 7,000 uh, permits it's a maximum number of work permits that can be issued to foreigners within a year and there's a whole procedure for the determination of the labor code code so what needs to happen before the first of may every year is that employers submit a forecast of the information on the number of foreign workers they are intending to recruit for the next year as indicated under the, the different professions and they need to send this to the state migration service the state migration service summarizes this information and until September 15th of each year, the relevant commission forecasts um, demand for foreign labor force and submits a proposal to the cabinet of ministers for what the quota should be. So then the quota is approved by the cabinet of ministers three months prior to the commencement of each year. So this they go through this process then every year to create the next quota. Here you can see activity fields that foreigners can be recruited based on the quota. Um, there are 19 different areas. I'm not going to go through them all, but you can see them also here on the screen. There are a number of people that are also exempt from a work permit. So the migration code also defines certain categories of migrants who are not required to obtain work permits to carry out paid labor activities in Azerbaijan. Um, there are a number of these. I'm just going to list a few of them here on the screen. Of course, again, if you want to learn more of this, check out some of the references and the sources in the description below. Activity fields conducted though without obtaining a work permit within the period of no more than 90 days are within the mining industry, manufacturing industry, supply and electricity, gas, steam and conditioned air. Um, information and communication, finance and insurance, education, transport, and also water supply. Now let's turn and look at refugee status. Azerbaijan acceded to the UN Convention on the Status of Refugees and its Protocols in 1992. The State Migration Service works on refugee status determination pro and uh, um, granting of refugee status. Asylum seekers can also apply for refugee status at border checkpoints or through several of the other ministries. Their applications are directed to the State Migration Service within three business days, though. The State Committee for Refugees and IDPs mainly works with victims um, from the Gorno karabakh conflict. And currently, Azerbaijan has more than one million refugees and, I and IDPs as a result of conflict. There's a specific way in which someone needs to also apply for refugee status, um, and the decision is adopted within three months. During the period uh, the while the asylum seeker is waiting for whether or not they receive refugee status, they receive a kind of temporary certificate. And if the status is granted, a person is provided with a refugee card and travel documents. In case their application is refused, um, they are provided with a decision within five business days by explaining the right to appeal, and asylum seekers and refugees can be voluntarily placed in detention centers if they don't have any other place to stay. These people can also work in Azerbaijan without having to obtain a work permit. We can also look at citizenship. Azerbaijani citizenship can be acquired either through birth or through naturalization. Since May of 2014, Azerbaijan prohibited dual citizenship. A foreigner or a stateless person who have been living permanently um, and interruptedly for the last five years in the territory of the, of the Republic of Azerbaijan on a legal basis can be admitted to the citizenship um, of Azerbaijan upon an application. And of course, they need to possess a legal source of income, undertake obligations on observing the constitution and laws of the country, and submit a document clarifying their knowledge of the state language um, of the country. All of this goes through the State Migration Service and uh, the State Migration Service then process the application and forwards it to the presidential administration for the final decisions. Their, their process is also for being able to regain or restoration and uh, revocation of, uh, um, of citizenship also. So citizens, citizenship of a person who has been previously a citizen of Azerbaijan or who has citizenship that has been re revoked can actually get this citizenship um, restored with a special application. Now we can also look at immigration policies aiming to reduce irregular migration. The, M the MIA, the SMS, and the SSS are responsible bodies for preventing irregular migration cases in Azerbaijan. And there are two types of punishment in this regard. There's non-expulsion and there's expulsion by imposing also 
um, a ban on re-entry. There are a number of policies trying to prevent irregular migration. So foreigners and stateless persons can be expelled from the territory in Azerbaijan in three cases. The first one, if there is a decision on compulsory expulsion as a punishment for committing a crime um, or for committing an administrative offense or by um, imposing a ban on entry according to Article 79 of the Migration Code. There are also issues around illegal settlement also in occupied territories. So irregular migration flows and settlements in occupied territories have continued um, until December 2020. According to the ICRC, each month 15 families were resettled in Nagoro Karabakh since the occupation, and in 2004, the number of families reached 200. We also see um, resettlement of refugees from Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon. We've seen a number of different resettlements over different periods. Human trafficking is also something that is important and it is covered within Azerbaijan. There's a separate law on combating human trafficking. There are also special shelters and assistance centers that were established for helping victims. Um, and there are some other shelters that are also affiliated with public unions. There are also rules of control over the creation, funding, and activities of special facilities for human trafficking victims. And victims of human trafficking or those who are, are, are assisting criminal procedural bodies um, are not required to have a work permit for paid labor activities, they're not expelled from the territory, and minor victims of trafficking are also not expelled from the country. There are also integration policies within the country. So the, these are free training courses for foreigners. They also have access to insurance and pensions for foreigners. Secondary education is also free of charge. There are also discounts on fees for students who are also doing their tertiary education in Azerbaijan. There are also rights for healthcare, joining trade unions, and representation in NGOs. There are also a number of integration policies specifically targeted towards refugees. There's a working group for integration and social protection. Um, there are pledges in the Global Refugee Forum for ensuring integration of refugees. Um, and there's also the inclusion of persons under UNHCR's protection in Azerbaijan in the medical insurance system. There's legal employment and, and access to the labor market. There's also supporting refugee students who pursue higher education in the country. And there's an additional subsidiary protection um, in adding this term into national legislation. Return, readmission, and reintegration are other important policy priorities in the country. So with regard to return, this covers the return of undocumented Azerbaijani citizens. The documents are issued by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs through diplomatic representation of Azerbaijan abroad. They get a laissez-passe for returning irregular migrants who are detained in the territory of Azerbaijan. The State Migration Service collaborates with diplomatic missions and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of foreign countries for obtaining the laissez-passe for them. The country also lacks some strategies for voluntary return, usually run by the International Organization for Migration. There is a pilot project on the assistance for voluntary return of migrants from Azerbaijan since December of 2018. Since February of 2014, there was a readmission agreement between the EU and Azerbaijan that was signed. There are other readmission agreements with um, Norway, with Switzerland, and with Montenegro. The State Migration Service is a responsible body for implementing readmission and return policy concerning Azerbaijani citizens. Um, the re readmission uh, issues department within the State Migration Service deals with readmission cases. And there are ongoing negotiations with or origin countries of irregular migrants also in Azerbaijan for concluding readmission agreements. So, so these, for instance, are uh, Russia, Ukraine, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and others. There are also agreements with other states uh, such as the United States, Serbia, Macedonia, Belarus, and Moldova. And they are also implementing protocols with a number of member Member states. With regard to reintegration, there is an interagency working group on reintegration that was founded in 2017. Um, it really looks at reintegration issues including accommodation, health care, employment, social security, and education. And all of these activities are coordinated by the State Migration Service. Returnees are met and surveyed upon their arrival and their needs are forwarded to the representatives of the working group. There are also two projects um, with the International Organization for Migration and the International Center for Migration Policy Development 
on readmission and reintegration in the country. Now we can also look at diaspora engagement policies. So there are 561 diaspora organizations of Azerbaijanis in 49 countries around the world. This is a, um, a Congress of the World for Azerbaijanis. There have been four of these so far. Um, on December 31st is the International Solidarity Day of World Azerbaijanis. There's also a state commit committee on work with diasporas that was established in 2002. In 2020, 650 events had been organized with the diaspora, so already quite a large number of events. Ten projects were also funded uh, under the Fund for Support of Azerbaijani Diaspora. And on October of 2020, the rule on the provision of social assistance to low-income Azerbaijanis living abroad was also established. And it came into a force in January of 2021. Here you can see where the major diaspora groups are around uh, the world. So a large number within Europe, um, uh, but also North America, the Middle East, Asia, and others. In July of 2018, there was the establishment of the electronic platform of Azerbaijani language for foreigners. Um, there are also regular weekend schools that are organized for teaching the Azerbaijani language. Um, and there's also an exchange of language and literature textbooks between Georgian and Azerbaijani schools by the diaspora. There's also a subsection on immigration that has been created on the webpage of uh, the State Migration Service. And of course, there are still some areas um, that lack with regard to the engagement of the diaspora. But there are more government measures now to try to increase trust building um, and, and more. Now, I know that was quite a lot to get through, quite a lot of policies. We have some really nice, rich information on Azerbaijan today. Of course, a very nice supplement to this video is the one on migration governance that shows you more of the frame of institutions also that are important in Azerbaijan. But of course, remember to check out that history of migration video and what's going on in the country today in the other videos. Please, if you liked this video, like, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos that I upload every week. And I do hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.